I think pretty much all DMAC surgeons have had an experience where the graft just won't unfold and you don't know why you're doing all of the right things. You're tapping on the corneal surface, you're putting fluid inside the anterior chamber and it just won't unfold. And why? And it's so frustrating and the stain is fading and the patient is moving on the operating room table and you're getting uncomfortable and why? And, and I still experience cases like this myself, and I want to show you a case from just five days ago that we did in our office based and operating environment. A FACO DMEC, a patient who was sent to me for cataract and Fuchs dystrophy, and this is that operation in which we're doing combined cataract surgery in DMEC. I'm using a 3.0 millimeter keratome to make my main corneal incision. I'm putting viscoelastic in the eye, always a cohesive when you're doing a FACO DMEC because because you don't want to leave any viscoelastic in the eye that would interfere with graft unfolding or that would interpose between the graft and the posterior cornea and precipitate a detachment. The FACO goes uneventfully. I like to use a pre-chopper and use a one-handed technique. I think that you have a little bit more chamber stability when you do that. I put air in the eye and then stain the back of the cornea with tripan blue and then put more viscoelastic in. And then always the next thing I do is I put the lens inside of the eye. Now my preferred lens is a three-piece silicone lens. This is the LI61AO made by b and I have no financial interest, but I like that lens. I think it's just very versatile, stable lens. But no matter what lens I'm using, I put it in the eye before I strip Decimase membrane. And the reason I always do that is Whenever you do anything at this stage, the pupil come down, comes down a little bit. So if you strip Decimase membrane and then you go to put the lens in, sometimes you can't really tell whether the lens is in the capsular bag or in the sulcus or halfway in the bag and halfway in the sulcus. So I always put the lens in first and then sort of replenish the viscoelastic and then I strip. This is an inverted Sinsky hook and I'm just stripping the stained Decimase membrane from the back of the cornea. I use an anterior chamber maintainer with saline then to make an inferior peripheral iridotomy. In here I'm going to inject the graft into the anterior chamber. I always aim away from the pupillary aperture because you don't want to fire the graft through the pupil into the back of the eye or wrap it around the lens. So you always sort of aim away into the angle so you won't have have that mishap happen to you. So here the graft is in the eye. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to inject a little saline just to get the graft to perk, and perk up, to open up and see what's going on. So there the graft is curled, floating in the center of the eye. It looks to me to be right side up. It's double scrolled. It seems like the operation is basically over at this point. So what do you do? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to through a paracentesis, check the Motsuro sign. I'm going to sneak this cannula in and get it to engage with the edge of the graft. There it is. You'll see that the cannula is blue, which means that the graft is right side up. So that means the graft is properly oriented and I can just unfold it here. So now I'm going to shallow the interior chamber and place a few taps on the corneal surface and see if I can get this graft to open up. So I'm shuffling it over to the side and I'm going to use the Durasamer technique to open up this edge of the graft and look, it's totally unfolded and the operation went completely predictably and all of the manipulations made sense. There's a logic to them. Wasn't that simple and nice, okay? But look. Actually, there's a little lingering edge of the graft, which is a little bit curled up still. And you'll notice that if that edge were to be flipped open, the graft would actually be slightly decentered superiorly. So it looks like I'm 98% of the way done, but when I try to iron out that edge, it, it actually doesn't iron out. It just causes the whole graft to sort of fold up. And here I'm putting a few Dirazomer taps on the surface of the cornea and okay, maybe that edge is mostly ironed out, but I'm trying to shuffle the graft over and it's not working. The graft is not moving. It's just that edge is kind of curling up again. So I'm actually going to rewind that and just show that again here. Okay. So here the graft is now curled up. Okay. And we're going to apply a few little Dirazomer taps to the surface of the cornea. Okay. So now the graft is opened up, but when I try to shift it over, Look, see what happens. The graft sort of buckles on itself, okay? So rather than shifting over, the graft just sort of crimps together. It buckles. And maybe I can iron out this little edge down here that's at, sort of at the superior globe. 
but the graph does not really want to see, seem like it wants to move over. And I'm having a lot of trouble with centration. And this edge now, not only is it not coming out, but it's bigger than it was before. The folded edge is larger. So we're moving in the wrong direction. And why? Well, one thing that I've discovered is that when the graft is upside down in the eye, it behaves in an unpredictable way. The normal manipulations and maneuvers that unfold the graft don't work, okay? And here, the manipulations and maneuvers aren't working. And I, I thought I checked the Motsuro sign. I thought that the graft was right side up, but this is not behaving in the way that it should. So I think, well, okay, well, maybe the graft is upside down, okay? So I'm gonna flip it over inside of the eye, I'm deepening the chamber, and now I'm gonna check the Motsuro sign again, okay? There we go, again, look, it's a positive Motsuro sign, we have a double roll, and I'm manually pushing the graft over in the eye, but look, when I apply taps to the corneal surface, the graft does not want to open up. Why? What's the reason? And the primary problem, again, here is not even the fold. You know, the, the edge sometimes we can get to come out, but it's centering the graft. Why can't I center the graft? What's going on? Well, what is going on in this case is that there is vitreous in the anterior chamber. And the telltale sign of vitreous in the anterior chamber is the graft buckling up on itself like that. And not only do you see it in that part of the video that I stopped and rewound, actually you'll see it right here. I'm gonna back it up just a few more minutes or a few more seconds. If you'll look at this folded edge here, you'll notice right there, that sort of unusual kink in the graft, right here, where it's not just folded over, but it's sort of wadded up or pinched together because there's some physical obstruction. And the reason there's vitreous in the anterior chamber is not because there was a PC rupture during the phaco, but there's vitreous that can sneak out through the inferior iridotomy. And that is so common, not to detect any vitreous in the eye, not to see any vitreous, not to find any in the wounds, but just to observe specifically that the graft cannot be moved into certain parts of the anterior chamber. And that is the reason why the graft couldn't be mobilized down into the inferior angle. So you have to suspect that as a possible problem even when you're operating on a phacic eye with a phacodemic and no problem during the phaco emulsification. So the way that you treat that, the way you deal with this situation is rather than trying incessantly to shove the graft over into the location in which it does not want to go, what you do is you want to lift the graft up away from the iris plane, away from any potential vitreous on an air bubble. And when the graft is lifted on the air bubble and the graft is no longer interacting with those vitreous tufts, then you can iron out these little edge folds in the graft, which I'm doing here, okay? Now, you'll notice even here, the graft is not perfectly centered inside of the eye. That's okay. One reason why I believe in large diameter decimeter rexes, why I always remove almost the entirety of the recipient decimase membrane and endothelium, is that way you don't have to have perfect centration. If the graft is a millimeter or so decentered, it won't detach because you're not going to overlap the graft because you've overstripped the recipient rim. The other thing is that it's just shocking how well these eyes do, even with an extra little gutter inferiorly where the graft does not lie, still the cornea clears up there remarkably quickly. So rather than being insistent on perfect centration, it's okay to be a little bit permissive with regard to the centration of the graft as long as you've overstripped the decimase membrane. So it is not always the case that in every situation in which you have a graft that won't unfold or won't center, there's vitreous in the anterior chamber. But I have found that happens so much more than people think. And when people think that there's fibrin in the AC, it may be vitreous instead, and you can get vitreous even from a very small 
well-crafted peripheral iridotomy. So I would suggest to you that you keep that as a possibility in mind. And if the graft won't move to certain parts of the eye, if it's not behaving predictably according to what should happen with taps on the cornea uh, surface, you should doubly think about it. And what you do in a situation like that, how you manage those eyes, is you lift the graft as soon as you feasibly can on an air bubble and you, et, you iron out the edges, those folded elements of the graft on top of the air bubble away from the vitreous. So the next time you're doing some DMEC and you think, why won't this unfold? It may be vitreous. Try putting an air bubble underneath the graft and see if that doesn't help.